just God's own son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One, Jesus, my God's kingdom here in Sandgate, for we are each part of God's glory kingdom. Welcome, welcome to church physically and online. We welcome you and seek that if you have any needs at all, or you would just like a chat, please contact Reverend Gary or your pastoral carer so that we can continue to love and care for each one of us together, knowing that we are made in God's image and God sing, then we should be singing too. Let us continue to praise God. Oh, my God. 
not fouled up their lives, for they can hold their heads high in God's presence. They are single-minded in pursuing God's way. They are not tempted to turn aside. They try not to harm anyone. 
they follow the Lord's footsteps. For God has shown the way. Let us pray. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, for we have learned of your justice and you have never left us without witnesses to your word. In ancient days, before you gave your people the land, you set before us a covenant with heaven and earth as your witnesses, calling us to embrace your ways and choose life over evil. When we turned away from you, life began to perish but you sent your child, Jesus Christ, your word become flesh, to reconcile us to one another and to you, so that the righteousness of your law might be fulfilled in us. Though he was killed, you raised him to life, and now in each generation your servants work together to plant and water the seed of your word, which you cause to grow in us, so that following your ways, life can be blessed. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. O oh God, source of loving kindness and strength, forgive us, Jesus, foundation of our faith, release us. Holy Spirit, ground of our very being, renew us. Amen. There are many notices in our In Touch this week. So if you haven't received it online or got a copy from up the back, please take a copy because it's quite a lot of things for us to uh, note and take note of. Of course, we know some, um, God's Groove is um, back happening um, during our worship service each, each morning and our evening worship, is, worship has started at 5 p.m. on a Sunday evening. And you can't get it wrong because it's every Sunday. We have conversations every Monday from 10 a.m. And on Tuesday, we have Bible study with Christine. The other regulars are in your in touch. I invite you to pass on these times, our worship morning times, our evening times, our conversation times, our study times, our Christian meditation times, to family and friends because all are open for people to come. There's a, um, a reminder for all the pastoral care coordinating team. We have a meeting at one o'clock tomorrow. And if you will take note of a vision workshop that um, to consider visions provided to the congregation last week in the meeting. Um, so if you'd like to be on a group or a committee. I don't like committees. Church committees t tend to bring up a vision of I'm sleepy. Um, <laughs> but we need an action group to move these projects forward. So please contact the office um, or Graham Mitchell uh, if you would like to be part of that group. Remembering too that there's a jam session each Saturday at 11. Oh, one o'clock. Sorry, I've got, I read the 11th. Next Sunday, Saturday. What was this Saturday? Yesterday was the 11th, but at one o'clock. So if you'd like to participate, you um, feel you have a gift in music or you just want to learn something, come along and listen. You never know. It might um, help you um, respond. Also, the Connect cards, we would like you to think about it again. Perhaps you don't feel comfortable. I'm collecting just a handful each week. But if you have a prayer request, please put your name on the list, your phone number, what your request is, fold it up and put it in the offering bag. So if you're feeling today that you have something, you really can't, you're not ready to talk to someone face to face, but if you write it down, someone will pray for you and that situation. So with that in mind, let's now, um, you can stay seated if you choose, as we sing, as the deer pants for the water as our offering collection is um, received. Thank you.
have blessed our lives by revealing for your, your love for us in Jesus, your beloved Son. We offer these gifts as tangible expressions of our joy and gratitude and pray that through them and our witness and service, others may come to recognise you. Amen. Okay, we're going to have a lot of kids here today, but there's a couple, and any adults that feel like they want to be a kid, come down too, okay? So that's you, Jim, up the back. I can see that you're a kid still. Um, the kids like to come out. We're right, we are online, so, uh, so remember that uh, if you come forward, that we are being broadcast to the world. If you come on down. Come on down. Here comes the one kid, and here comes one. And what's your name, little boy? Patrick. Patrick. Okay. Come on, here's our dancers. Come on, dancers. Here comes little Billy. Gee, he was dancing well last week. Weren't you, Billy? Hey? You can come and stand up here with me, you boys. Come and stand up here with me, AJ. You can stand up here and help me, all right? Okay, come on, any adults, come and help them, come on. My wife's not here to encourage everyone, is she? She's got a migraine. Come on, someone want to come down and help? Dance with the kids and, you know? Yeah, come on. Yeah, we're here. All right, let's get this. We've got this song. Here it is up on the screen there, Bill. Oh, 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 I like you. Nobody else can shine the way you do. In this great big world, nothing could be more true than the way I feel. I like you. When you're happy, when you're sad, when you're feeling anxious or super duper mad. If you feel a little crazy, that's okay. Let me tell you a secret. We all feel that way.
you're covered in dirt When you're full of joy When your feelings are hurt You don't need to pretend When I'm around Just feel what you're feeling Cause every feeling is allowed I think you're amazing The way you are right now Oh, oh, oh I like you Nobody else can shine the way you do In this great big world Nothing could be more true Than the way I feel I like you Everybody point to somebody and say I like you You do I like you I like you I like you I like the breath in your step And the groove in your moves I like the roll in your rock And the hip in your hop I like the breath in your step And the groove in your moves The roll in your rock And the hip in your hop I like the breath in your step And the groove in your moves I like the roll in your rock And the hip in your hop I like the breath in your step And the groove in your moves I like the roll in your rock And the hip in your hop Oh, oh, I like you Nobody else can shine the way this great big world Nothing could be more true Than the way I feel I like you I like you Nobody else can change the way you do In this great big world Nothing could be more true Than the way I feel I like you Ha <laughs>just as the kids now I don't think they're going out anywhere today it's under the two here so uh, we're just going to pray for them and uh, bless them eh? Lord we're just going to bless the children now Lord that uh, come here regularly and uh, I just pray Father that you'll, they'll grow up to know who you are Lord that Jesus is their saviour as well so Father I just pray that you'll be with them and bless them in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Good morning, everyone. And the world. Oh, sorry. I said it. Dear God, the will God of all across our globe, our globe, on a daily basis situation, our weapon, there will be profound impact of individuals, sorry, communities and nations. We often forget that you, God, created our world and all power is ultimately yours. We pray for your kingdom to come here in this place, that your will will be done in our lives. Hear as we pray for those facing difficulties in the world, the people in Turkey as they work through recovery after the earthquake, where many have died, wild family fires <laughs> in Chile where the death toll rises, we pray for the families. Hear us, O oh God, for the people of Ukraine and for Russia. We pray for world leaders, as just like us, they need prayer. We pray for the family fans of the teenage killed by a shark in the Swan River. O oh God, we pray for the global, global church and a shared message of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, 
Dear Lord, we pray for our local community and those around us. We pray for the people who serve us, the ones that teach at the schools, Lord. I pray for the children and the teachers. I pray for the nursing homes and the nursing staff. I pray for everyone there. And Lord, we want to pray for the policemen, the firemen, and the ambulances. Lord, they do a mighty work to support us and, and take us to hospital when we need it, and we are benefited by that. So Lord, uplift all of those people. And Lord, I want to uplift the people in our community who still haven't gotten over this flood that happened so long ago now. Lord, may they have some answers towards that. So Lord, be with us, them all, and um, I lift your name up, Lord. Amen. Father God, we just ask your blessing on our church here in Sandgate. Thank you for each and every person who worships here and online. Thank you for all the gifts and talents that you have given us and help us to use these gifts and talents wisely and generously. We pray for Gary, for good health, for your wisdom and discernment for the way to lead our church in the direction you want to lead us. We pray too for Deborah this morning um, as she is unwell, but we ask your blessing on her as she supports Gary um, in all that he does. We pray for our church council and the elders and all those in leadership positions. We pray for wisdom and for integrity in all they do. We think of those people who are not well this morning. We pray for Bevan and Rosalind, for Graham Mitchell, for Kathy and Jenny Sawyers. Father, we pray that you will continue to heal them. We thank you for the healing that has already taken place. Um, and we pray that you will continue to restore them all to your health, to good health. And we pray for anyone else in this congregation who is not well this morning, that you would bless them and give them good health. We pray for the activities of our church, that you will raise up more leaders and helpers so we can continue to be a light in this community. Help us all to be faithful servants and show your love to all we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading today comes from Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48. Would you like to read this with me this morning? Love your love for enemies. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of the Lord. G'day. How you doing? Notice I don't need the pulpit to hold me up. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, well, once, Lord, well, not, not that long ago, I couldn't even walk around properly. So I think it's great. I feel free. <laughs> Love your enemies, eh? Isn't that something that we all do? not we don't love our enemies very often do we what do we normally do with our enemies hey 
If someone has a go at you, what do you normally do? Have a go back, don't you? All right? We don't sit there and go, oh, look, I just love that person because they're just annoying me. I said, particularly in driving in the traffic and someone cuts you off and slams their brakes on and you nearly go up the back of them. You just go, I love you, don't you? <laughs> yes? No? Yes. You don't love them? <laughs> There's so many things in our life that goes on about loving our enemies. And why did Jesus say, I want to love, you've got to love your enemies? Why? Why did he do this in his sermon? This is the Sermon on the Mount. He said, love your enemies. It's because it's opposite to what the world thinks. The world goes, I hate my enemies. I'm going to blow them out of the existence. I'm going to go over there and we're going to take an army and we're going to fight them. We're going to do all these things to stop us loving them. First thing the world thinks of is revenge. How do we get back at them? It's very hard sometimes, particularly when the towers in, in New York came down. The government there didn't go, oh, look, we just love those terrorists. No, they took revenge and, they, and actually wiped out so many people and people that had nothing to do with it got killed. And then they went into another country and did more stuff. You know, it's like they couldn't stop. They were so revengeful. Arr, you know, we've got to get back at all of them now. We've got, to, we've got our opportunity. Let's get back at everyone. Because the worldly way is to get back at people. Don't let them stand on you. You know, Jesus was, was told that he was meek and mild. But I can tell you now, meek and mild is powerful. A powerful, powerful thing. Because if you can stand there and put up with people or someone annoying you or someone doing all sorts of stuff, I'm going to tell you a couple of little stories. You like me stories? And some of them are full-on stories. I'm going to go straight to the Philippines. We've got someone from the Philippines here. Anyone else from the Philippines? No? I'm going straight to the Philippines where my sister was over there with a group called Youth with a Mission. Youth with a Mission were a missionary group and they were operating at this place in a place called Tongo, Tondo. Rubbish tip, is that right? The massive rubbish tip for Manila. <whistles> massive piles, not like here where they have bulldozers digging holes and putting it in. Over there, it piles up like a mountain. Smoky Mountain, I think they call it. Is that right? Yeah. Smoky Mountain. They've got little fires going all the time. And you know what? There's probably a thousand or more people living on the tip. Living there. And they pick any of the rubbish that comes in, cardboard boxes, they make up little awnings, and that's what they sleep under. Isn't that nice? And then they all wash toilet, everything in the little river going past. That's where they do everything. And that's even they are drinking water. Isn't that good? And these people live there. This missionary group decided they were going to go and plot themselves just next to the tip. And they went out onto the tip and the little babies are being born on that tip and they're taking sick people because they're getting sick. They're eating rubbish that the flies are all over on the tip. I'm making you feel sick, aren't I? But this is reality. A little bit of reality doesn't hurt us. This place was horrible. They went out there carrying little babies to the hospital that were nearly dead. From just all the end, you can think of all the illnesses you can get that we don't get no more because we get injections. Babies get injections now, don't they? We don't get those diseases, but they get them. There's no plan there for go to the, the doctors and get, a, get all, your, all your needles. They get sick instead. Typhoid and all them things that they can get. 
when a truck comes in and unloads the rubbish, all the kids are jumping right, piling, running up the piles of rubbish to get to that, that truck load because there might be some food that are only, only about a week old in there. And they grab it and take it back to their family. People live like that. Huh? Doesn't it make us feel rich? Doesn't it make us feel good? I'll tell you what, why I'm getting to this story. My, my sister and a few of the team left to go to another village to do some mission work. And they went in one of those, what are those little buses called? They've got no windows. What are they? Cheap? Cheapy. Yeah. Okay. They went in one of those things up into the mountains. And the village is there. And it does rain a lot over there too. And those villages, it's a, it's a scary drive up into some of the villages in the mountains. They went up there to do some work up there. And they left the family and kids back at the base and that's where they left them. Well, over there, back in the, the days of this, in the early 80s, the communism was very strong over in the Philippines. And they were, they were fighting with, with the locals a lot about who was going to govern there. And they came in there because they didn't like this missionary group. And they came in that day that my sister and the whole team were away and they cut the heads off the parents in front of the kids. I know this is it's reality, okay? Now, the parents of those the parents of those couple live in Australia. And you know, the first thing they did is got a whole bunch of people with guns and went over and shot them. No, they didn't. They were Christians. They got on the news and said, we are praying for that family that, of these people that did this. They caught them. They put them in jail. The families from Australia went over there to visit them in jail. Those kids have probably got this on their face the rest of their life, what they saw, their parents getting done. These grandparents of those kids went to the jail and blessed these people and said, we are praying for you. How could you do that? How is that possible? Well, I can tell you now it's not possible unless you've got Jesus in your heart. You can't do it. I'm getting emotional about this. How can you do that? without Jesus. Jesus said, love your enemies. That to me was true love. They went over and said, we love you and we want to share Jesus with you. And in fact, those people that killed those parents became followers of Jesus. They actually followed Jesus because they couldn't believe that these people loved them. But most of us would be just revengeful, wouldn't we? Well, get back at them. That's not what God wants us to do. As hard as it is, as hard as it is, we've got to follow what Jesus says we should do. Love your enemies. I'll tell you another story. It's a little bit lighter. <laughs> I wonder if it was a heavy one on first. We were living in a house in a place called Berkeley in, in, down in Wollongong. And we, we, our driveway went up like this and the house is on the top of the sort of rise. My kids were, ooh, Tegan was about five, five, six, seven, nine, some of that age group. And they were playing the, with the ball in the yard up the top of the drive at the back there. And the ball and rolled down the hill, crossed the road into the neighbour's house. So they got another ball or another thing, and that, that rolled down the hill. And next thing they had over the neighbour's house, a whole bunch of toys and things that had rolled down the hill, 
and gone across the road and into the neighbour's house. They went over to see the neighbour and the neighbour told them, get out, you're not getting your toys back. The lady there was so angry with them. How dare you kids come here and near my property. And they came back and I went, really? And I went over and talked to her and she shammed the door in my face. And I thought, wow, there's something really going on here. So the first thing we did is got revenge, didn't we? No. I said to my kids, because they wanted to go and throw rocks at her house. <laughs> that was the thing they wanted. Can we throw rocks at it, Dad? Dad, can we go and smash their windows with the rocks? I said, no, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> and I said to them, you know what? Every time we go out the driveway in the car, wave to them. Wave to her when you see her. And so that's what they did. They hung out the window waving, going, hello, hello. Every time we did it. And she kept looking at him with a frown on her face. And then one day she waved back. And then she said to me, when I got out of the car, she said, can, can you just bring the kids over, please? And one day we went across the road. She invited us inside. And she said, I've got some ice blocks for the kids. And she gave them an ice block each. And my kids are sitting there going, wow, Dad, it worked. <laughs> she gave all the toys back. That's not the end of it. Because I said, are you, are you okay? She says, well, my husband's in that bedroom over there. He's had a stroke and I'm, I'm looking after him. He's just lying in a bed. She said, my daughter won't bring the grandkids around because she doesn't want us to be, she doesn't want anything to do with us. They were sitting there as grandparents, not able to see any of their grandkids. Her husband's in, in a mess, and she was completely stressed out. And she said, I saw your kids, and I got jealous. I can't see mine. But she says, can I adopt yours? Because they're waving at her and everything. And I said, sure. I said, this is your new grandmother. <laughs> She had them over every second day. They were over there. She was giving them cakes and oh, my kids loved it. But she loved it too because she was able to be with some kids. And we got to pray with her about her husband and we shared Jesus with her. She came from an Orthodox background, so she wasn't you know, completely outside of everything. Orthodox meaning, I think she was Greek or something like that, and she come from a Greek Orthodox sort of tradition. She understood what God was, but had no relationship there. We helped her have some sort of relationship as we went along. And when we left that place, we left the house across the road, we moved, she was very upset. She came out and she, she, used to, she gave us food and all that on the day when we were trying to move, you know, and just was so upset that we were leaving. So there's a good story, isn't it, about love your enemies. My kids could not, could not stand them, you know, but just by the word, waving and say, hello, hello, hello. It came around and she, and it got her. Jesus said this because that's what happens, Okay. That's what happens when we love our enemies. It's like someone is really, really being nasty to you and you just keep loving them. You say, oh, but I love you. you know, no, no not gonna, it's not going to affect me. It might be inside, it might be affecting you, but you've got to say, no, be strong and say, okay, I'm going to pray for you. I've done that a few times. People get in your face and they're... <laughs> you know, I've been at bike clubs where some guy, you know, was trying to, he wanted to punch holes in me because I was telling him about Jesus. And um, we were in this big clubhouse and, you know, things were happening and, and he's, you know, he, he was having a go at me about all that. And I said, but Jesus loves you. <laughs> and he's getting all cranky and everything else. But Jesus loves you. And I'm going to keep praying for you, bud. You know, and that's what happens. 
God breaks through because we are being what God wants us to be. Sometimes it doesn't sound normal. And from the world's point of view, it sounds stupid. But so does the cross of Jesus to the world. The cross of Jesus doesn't make sense to the world. Why put a good man on a cross and kill him? Doesn't make sense. But Jesus had to do that because that was the will of his father. And he did that so he could conquer sin and so he could come back alive again. The cross makes no sense whatsoever to people. But it's through the cross that we have salvation, we have hope. We can love our enemies because of the cross. We can do everything in this world because of what Jesus did on the cross. That Jesus was saying before he went on the cross in his sermon, love your enemies. And you know what? It gives us blessings. We get blessed because of it. And sometimes the person that's your enemy becomes not your enemy and becomes a follower of Jesus because of it. Sometimes they don't. But like the scripture is saying, it rains on all of us, all together. We all get, get the rain together. But that doesn't mean that we stop being loving our enemies. It's easy to love someone that likes you, isn't it? Isn't it easy? If someone likes you, you think, oh, it's easy, it's great, you know. I can love them as much as I like. Yep, it's good. But as soon as someone doesn't like you, you go, mm, okay, you don't like me, eh? All right, okay, we'll sort that out. We'll fix that up. You don't like me? Try this. Move, you know. Do something, do something that doesn't, you know, that hurts them or upsets them. And, ah, I got them back that time, didn't I, eh? Yeah. Isn't that our way? We think straight away. That's our way of dealing with things. And I know it can be really hard, particularly those people in the Philippines. How could those grandparents go over and say, oh, we love you because you killed our kids? How could they do that? They could only do that because of the love of Christ in them. That's why it's so important for us to have Christ living in us not just be churchgoers and think that it's great to be at church and do all our programs. I'm more interested in people's lives being changed by Jesus Christ than programs. We have to have programs sometimes to do things. But having Jesus live in your life is more important because that's what gives us the, the power to be able to do things. The Holy Spirit in us gives us the power to be able to love your enemies as well as you love your people that love you. It can be very difficult sometimes. Sometimes we, a lot of times, I know I don't always, it doesn't always happen good for me neither. Sometimes I get angry and cranky with them and I'll fix you up. <laughs> but that's not the way of God. The way of God is love them. And you know what I said to someone one day, they said, but I'm, I'm getting, um, I, I get bashed around by my me, me husband or partner all the time. How can I love him? He keeps beating me up. He does all these things to me. I can't stand him. I can't deal with it anymore. And I said, that's, that's okay. You can still love him and pray for him but you don't have to have anything to do with him, okay? That's the big point. It doesn't mean you've got to be buddy-buddy best mates just because you love them. It's about our heart. Do we still consider that a prayer point? Do we, can we still pray for that person? Can we still... You don't have to have anything more to do with him. You don't have to go near him ever again. But you've still got to love them. You know, you've still got to love those people. And so that's another thing that we've got to think about. Just because they're so mean to you and you can't even live with them, you can't be near them, doesn't mean you can't love them. Okay? Loving people doesn't mean you're in your pocket. 
Loving him is what your heart's doing. Is your heart right with God? Because if it is, you're going to love him. You can't help it. But you don't have to have anything to do with him. You don't have to have anything more to do with him. It's like when someone you know, gets in front of your car and stops and hits the brakes. You probably never see him again in your life. But you can say, I love him. You don't love what they do. That's not the point. You're not loving what they do. The parents of those kids didn't love what they did to their, their kids. But they love the person because Jesus loves them. He loves everyone because he died on the cross, not just for us. He died for everyone. He didn't die for just particular people that love him. He died for everybody, including Judas who betrayed him. He died for everyone. So that's why we have to love everyone. I hope today that message comes home clear. I hope that is something that sits with you and you think about it, pray about it. Because there's obviously people at work or people where you go that, that, that really annoy you. And you've got to still love them. But you don't have anything to do with them. I'm not saying that. But love them. And you watch, God will change them. God can change them. It says in the scriptures something about it, heaping hot coals on their head because you keep praying for them. And that means that they, they're going to feel God, oh, that person, I can't do anything to annoy them. Everything I do, they just love me. You know? Guess what? That changes people. Why do you think the early church grew 3,000 people a day? Why? Because the people that were part of the church in the courtyard of the temple loved each other. And the people there go, how can they love each other? I saw so, so-and-so over there have a go at them one day and took some of their property off them. But now they love each other. <laughs> you know? And people would have seen all this and say, well, whatever they've got, I need, I want. The world needs love. Not the Beatles, I think, started singing that stuff, didn't they? And then they broke up. The world needs love. The world can't give love. They don't know what love is. They mistake love for passion. Love is about where your heart is with God because if we love God, the other part of that little saying is if we love God, we're going to love each other. That's what Jesus told us. Love your God with all your heart, soul and mind, but love your neighbour as you love yourself. It doesn't exclude people. It doesn't exclude them. It means you've got to love everyone. I just pray that today we can think, do that. I'm going to just have a little time now where I want you to sit and think and pray to yourself right now about something or a situation that makes you not like someone. It might be very simple. It might be very difficult. Pray that you can have the strength to love them. Let's just pray those little prayers now. Heavenly Father, all these prayers, Father, you've just heard. I just pray, Father, that you will bless each one. Give them the strength to be able to love, even though they might be hurt. Give them the strength, Father, to understand that your love for us is so strong. That even though we hurt you, Lord, you keep loving us. Even though we keep doing things that we shouldn't do, you keep loving us and loving us and loving us. You don't stop. And that's how we've got to be with people and each other. We've got to keep loving, Lord. We've got to keep loving and loving and loving. Guide us, Father, in this love. 
help us to understand what that means. It means giving up of ourself and handing over to you, Lord. And I just pray that we can do that, Lord. Be with us in everything we do and everything we say. Our mouth can be a terrible thing sometimes. Help us to say something nice to somebody today, Lord. I've been saying this now for a few weeks. Say something nice because it makes so much difference. Keep the negative out. We don't need the negative. We just need positive voices from people to say something nice to somebody. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen, as we go into the next song. As we remember and ponder what Gary has shared with us today, let's remember those among us who give thanks for God's unconditional love. And I want to take this moment to say thank you to Sangate Uniting Church from the community as a broad community and from those among us who were on the receiving end of our generosity in the floods last year. The people we have helped say thank you. And I've had the privilege of being in a couple of homes um, over the past little while that have been almost fully restored. So you remember these floods happened around this time last year and this is 12 months on and lots of places still are not and not going to be fixed. But for those that we have helped, they say thank you. And I've been given permission to say a special thank you to the congregation for all of our care from Ken and Carolyn Blowers. So I wanted to share that with you this morning so that we can feel as we move forward that we are redeemed by God, by his love and grace as we sing our final hymn this morning. Loving God, as we go from this place, 
blessed, renewed, restored by you, by your loving grace. Lord, teach us as we go out today to love each other. Not just each other we see, but everyone we meet along the way. God bless you as you go this day. In Jesus' name, amen.